there are over 10,000 mod packs on Curse Forge alone. How will you ever know which packs are going to be worth your time? Well, I've started the incredible task of completing each mod pack in a single video. I'll be honest with you, this isn't the best way to grow a YouTube channel, so if you do like this kind of thing, I would love it if you liked and subscribed. This is the fourth mod pack to enter the series, so today, let's dive into some Project Sacrifice. Roll that intro. Today, we're going to be completing Project Sacrifice in a single episode. We'll be diving deep into the Create mod to set up some incredible automation. We'll be setting up smelteries to process every type of Tinker's construct resource. And at the very heart of this mod pack is Blood Magic, where we must progress through five different tiers of Blood Altars and venture deep into its endless dungeons. So remember to subscribe and share this video far and wide so everyone gets to see how this pack will unfold. Oh, and there's one thing I haven't told you yet. It's a skyblock. Hello. Oh dear, it's been a while since I've uploaded a video. Whoopsies. Now for some unworldly reason, the majority of you actually want to see more grindy microcrafting. And well, you are in for a treat with this pack. We start our Minecraft journey as always by punching a tree? Okay, so we start out in the quest book where we're given a sacrificial knife, a backpack, a book, a temp pad and 32 nutrient bars. Now we need to be very careful about using those nutrient bars because if we run out before we can make our own food, it's game over. So let's make our very first sacrifice. And by doing it on these blank runes, we are given some essence, dirt and stone. Our first taste of a very very limited mystical agriculture. Oh nice, these nutrient bars give a ton of saturation. So we can make some gravel, do some more sacrificing, eat another bar, make some dirt and make some cobblestone. Our sacrifices are generating life essence, which we can then use to turn this dirt into wood essence. And four of those make a crafting table. And three more of them make some spruce logs. Tasty. Now the quests need us to make a storage drawer. We're going to do it though, we're not really going to need it for a while yet. Now that we have blocks, I think it's time to use effortless building to expand our area slightly. Holding alt brings up the menu and let's select floor. We can tell it to build from here to here. It's just so easy. Effortless one might say. It can place up to 30 or so blocks in one go. It's pretty dang useful. Now let's combine some of our gravel and cobblestone to make some andesite. We can offer that up for sacrifice and it'll convert into andesite alloy. Our first step towards create. But now we're just going to make 9 as it's going to cost us 250 life points at a time. And LP is expensive while we have limited food. We can turn that into a block and after we supply 3250 LP to our blood altar, we can convert it into a block of iron. Ouch. Now we're going to need a source of rotational power as we're working towards the sifter. That's going to require a little bit more andesite alloy and I need to be very careful with how much food I'm using because again, if we go too hard, we lose. Yay, andesite age. And yay, ultramine is included. Amazing. So let's make up some water wheels and we can upgrade those to large water wheels. Rotational power sorted. Huh. I have no idea how I just placed this item down like this. It's like a micro block. Kind of frustrating right now, to be honest. For some strange reason, when we place an empty bucket into our altar, it gives us a bucket of water. Don't ask me how that works. I, I just don't know. So here we go. Spinny boys go round and round. And let's turn our iron nuggets into brass essence, of which we're going to need eight. And crafted together, they make four brass ingots. Up next, we're going to need a sifter and a brass mesh. And then we're going to need to work towards a mechanical mixer. However, this is not spinning fast enough, so we're going to need to do some gear ratios. Something like this will do nicely. But sadly, we must consume some more food as we're going to need a bunch more andesite alloy. There we go, one mechanical press. Now we can make some iron sheets. And then we can make the mechanical mixer. We're more than halfway through our food at this point. I'm getting kind of nervous. And now we need a basin. That means even more andesite alloy crafting. But we can pop this under the mixer. Whew. Let's throw in some sticks to make it into string. Don't ask me how that one makes any sense either. And that's a string mesh made. So the sifter needs to be waterlogged. So let's pop down some trapdoors. Then water goes down first. Then our sifter. String mesh on top and let's throw in some dirt. Very slowly that's going to get squished and we got a kelp. Nice! We can pop that into the blood altar to get our first piece of nature essence. And three nature essence can make eight potatoes. We now have a renewable source of food once we set up a farm. 
So now that we have a food source, I feel a lot more comfortable expanding out the base. So let me see what I can hobble together. This is what I hobble together. It ain't pretty as it's very temporary. Luckily, Nature Essence gives us access to grass, so that's nice, I guess. We've got a potato field and I've got some bamboo from the sifter, which is a much faster way of getting the Nature Essence, especially since we can just work to speed up growth. I've increased our rotational power substantially, and in this mess here, we have got everything I think that we're going to need. Like we have a press on a depot with a mixer and a basin, sifter and a hopper below to pull out the generated items. They go into this chest. And I went ahead and made an encased van because baked potatoes are a much better food source. That needed a campfire which needs coal, but if we use the brass mesh we can sift gravel and we get a ton of crushed ores, including coal. I think I don't want to automate this soon I think. The final thing we have is a mechanical saw because it is a much more efficient way to make shafts. Now let me show you a very easy way to build lower in the world without having to risk your life with a water stream. Using effortless building, if you select the slope floor, we're going to click on our platform, click a second time, look down and click again. But with that we now have plenty of room for activities. Also the sun doesn't really move so if you're planning on doing a 100 days uh, series on this I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> Let's progress again and now make some crushing wheels. Thankfully a much earlier game friendly recipe just requiring some water wheels and some stone. And we can get the stone from bulk smoke in cobblestone. Let's plug those in on this little setup that we've got here. A pair of giants indeed. We can now throw in cobble and have a much cheaper source of gravel. But more importantly we can crush it again and we can get some sand. Now back to the string mesh. We can sift this sand and we now have access to redstone and bone meal. Yay pretty flowers. Woo, this cheeky boy is selling dripstone, which is infinite lava, but alas, we have no emeralds and we're not going to have them for a while. So let's grab this fella using carry on and good luck on your future endeavors. Yay, redstone. That means that we can now make some droppers, though we kind of need a little bit more redstone. So let's move over to moving our campfire with carry on and replacing it with water. Now we have a way to wash our crushed ores into nuggets and their tasty byproducts. Thankfully, iron gives us redstone. Also, bonus tip here, if you press Shift and K in a crafting table, you can auto compress all of those nuggets into ingots. With redstone and droppers, we can now make some item pipes. Finally, an easy way to move items around. Oh, and we're also gonna need a pipe wrench. Oh my goodness. The pipes mod has had a visual update and this is so much better. As appearance was my only complaint with the mod, it's absolutely perfect, well done developers. So let's pop down a drawer on this side and one on this side. Then we'll just convert this rocky deer into a blank slate and we'll pop that into the drawer on the right. Then we're just going to pop down two item pipes, set them both to extract on the left. And then all we need to do is put rocky deer into the left drawer for it to get automatically placed into the altar. Sadly, it's not going to move one at a time like I'd hoped, but it might be fine. But once it's converted to slate, it'll get moved over automatically. We just need to make sure that there's enough life essence in this altar, which it never normally is. But this will be especially useful when it comes to making andesite alloy. Yay, nether quartz. So water in our basin, throw in the quartz, one blank slate and a lapis. That'll mix together and give us one blitz powder. We can then press that into a lightning charge, which we can then craft up into three fire charges. We can then bulk smoke some sand to get some glass. And finally, we can craft a cobblestone generator tier 3. Just like that, we have reasonably quick cobblestone generation. This is going to allow us to very easily automate the sifting of gravel to get the crushed ores, which I'll think I'll set up a little bit later. Up next, I want to plant some cows in the ground to grow some more. I'm sure it makes sense to someone. A cow seed needs 4 nature essence and 9 dried kelp. Let's combine the kelp into a block and nice, we have a cow seed. Now, the only way to speed up its growth is this watering can. We can use shift right click to fill it up a few times and we can use it to very slowly make the cow grow. Now, very important, we need to hold down the ultimine key and then use a right click. That's going to release the cow from her grassy prison. In between clips, I'll go ahead and grow some more because in in order to get into biomancy, we are going to need a ton of different animals. But next, we can take some of our flesh bits and offer it up to the blood altar. In return, we're going to get a weak blood orb. 
we can then craft that with some blank slates and some stone to get some blank runes. We can use these to upgrade our blood altar to tier 3. Before we can do that though, we're going to need a spout and we're going to set this up on a depot next to a water source. Then with a fluid pipe and a tank, we'll be able to pump water directly into this spout because we cannot add water directly. If we throw in 4 lightning charges into the depot, it'll convert over to glowstone. This is a fairly involved process. And check in the book, it looks like we actually need 16 glowstone to make 4 blocks. Oh dear. I think I'm going to need to set up a teeny tiny bit of automation for crushing the ores as we are going to need a ton more quartz. Let me see what I can come up with. I think I've got something. It's incredibly easy now that we've got the cobblestone generator from earlier. Up at the top we've got the generator. That puts cobblestone into the chute which then feeds into our crushing wheels. The gravel then feeds into a sifter which then dumps its products into a hopper which is fed into this buffer chest. We're then using the pipes mod to extract everything into locked drawers. We've got 4 drawers for the crushed ores and then a 2x2 drawer for the miscellaneous junk. Eventually we're going to want to send this crushed ore over to an automated washing system but for now this is fine. Over here we've got more cows and I'm hoping very soon that we'll be starting some biomancy too. Oh and breeding is so much more convenient than using those seeds. I made the wheat using nature essence but I'm hoping that if we put some in a crushing wheel we'll get lucky and yes we have some seeds. At this point I think I've got enough food to be able to swap out these potatoes for wheat since we're still going to need a ton more animals. Now most of you know that I have zero organizational skills when it comes to vanilla storage so I think it's time that we get some modded storage storage underway with the colossal chest. This is going to give us one massive inventory for all of our items to go into. We can take this one step further as if we attach a crafting station to the chest core, we can now craft with items directly from this colossal chest. So I've moved everything over and wow, yeah, we're really poor at the moment. Right then, let's go ahead and make our altar a tier 3. And to make life simple, let's just use the visualize button and right click on our altar. Then all we need to do is place the right blocks in the ghosts. Ding ding ding! Legally speaking, we now have a tier 3 blood altar. Very nice indeed. Okay, there's no avoiding it anymore. It's time to dive into a teeny tiny bit of Tinker's Construct. We're gonna need to make up a bunch of grout. Also, I just noticed the panda seeds are cheap, so let's get those planted too. And not too long later, we have lots of lovely animals to look at. Yeah, I kind of avoided doing Tinkers. Especially since I had a happy accident with the carry-on mod and I found out that you can stack animals on top of each other. It's quite bizarre. So I made up a seared heater and a melter and I melted down 4 copper ingots to pour over a seared brick. That gave us a smeltery controller. This is different. It looks like we need to get a bucket of molten blazing copper. It's molten copper and coal in a mixer. That's pretty cool. I'm kind of out of seared bricks and grout though, so let's move on to a mod that I have never used before. Let's take a look at Biomancy 2. We're going to need to make some bone fragments, easy enough, and we're going to use those to make a bone cleaver. Now we must make some sacrifices. When we use the cleaver to do so, we're going to start getting drops from Biomancy. That time we got sinew. I believe that different mobs are going to give us different drops, which is why I've made pandas too. So let's put the cows to use, though I always feel a bit guilty about this. 14 bio glands and 34 sinew. There we go, the seared brick is ready, so let's set up a simple smeltery. But now we're just going to dump it in this gap right here. I think that's everything we're going to need, except a fuel source. Ooh, we can avoid it some more because I need to check to see what pandas drop. Sharp claws. That's actually great because we do need those. We can use them to make a primordial cradle. Oh my goodness, that looks amazing. So by the looks of it, we're going to need to feed this thing a bunch of raw meat and then use a potion of healing on it. That'll give us the living flesh that we need to continue. Not sure how to make a healing potion yet, so let's pivot back and fill up a bucket with molten copper. We'll pop that into our mixer with some coal, and that'll mix together to make the molten blazing copper. Very nice. We can use this to fuel our smeltery since we don't exactly have lava yet. Now if we put a spare smeltery controller into our blood altar, that's finally going to give us access to a regular Minecraft furnace. We have a fully functional Tinker smeltery. I feel like we're going to be using this a lot much later. 
Now it's time for a little more panda removal and try and get some more drops. Just gonna breed them up real quick and it seems that you do need to have bamboo planted nearby for them to breed. I really don't know enough about vanilla Minecraft. Ah! Ow! Pandas are mean! That was close. Oh my goodness you silly jump scare. That's not what you want to hear when you jump into a pen of peeve pandas. Only two more claws, that's not ideal. Ah well, we still need to make a potion of healing. That requires liquid potion which is made via automated brewing. Annoyingly that's going to need a heated blaze burner. We're also going to need some nether wart which we're going to get from nether essence which is netherrack in our altar. Netherrack is life essence from our altar spouted over cobblestone. So first let's steal some of that life essence into a tank and we're going to attach that to our spout from earlier. All cobble underneath will hopefully yes convert into four netherrack. Four iron blocks for an empty blaze burner is outrageous. I guess it makes up for it because if we mix it with some life essence, a blaze will magically be put inside of it. We can pop him under our basin for safekeeping. Netherrack goes into the blood altar, that gives us nether essence. Two nether, one nature essence gives us the wart. We can mix that with water and a little heat to give us our liquid awkward potion. Nine nature essence to make a melon block. Let's break one to get a melon slice and we're going to make that feather glisten with some gold nuggets. That can then also go into our brew and now we've got one bucket of potion of healing. Second depot and second spout, we can pump it across, spout onto some bottles and we have regular old bottles of healing. So far, I am actually kind of loving how chill and simple this mod pack is. It's likely going to get harder later, but for now it's still kind of fun. Just a bit grindy. So let's feed our little cradle fella here some meat and give him a potion of healing. Huh. Okay, let's give him a second potion. Uh, oh my goodness, hello my friend! You're a cute bouncy cube of flesh, aren't you? Oh, that's where we get the living flesh from. I think it's best that we don't think about that too much. One living flesh from two potions though is very expensive, but we can now make the decomposer. It turns out that in order to decompose things, we need to feed said decomposer. <laughs> A living breathing composter. Up next is the bioforge however that's gonna require even more living flesh. I guess I need to go and make a couple more potions. I'll see you in a little bit. Do you want early access to videos before they're live on YouTube? Consider becoming a channel member. Alrighty then let's do some work. I think we now have everything to make this bioforge except for the living flesh. It turns out there is a method to get more flesh from each QB boy. You just need to give them some raw meat and they will very slowly increase in size. Who would have thought it? So let's give them the old one too and yeah, 21 living flesh instead of one, it's so worth the time to grow them. So I kinda made all these extra potions for nothing. Oh well, that's one bioforge, thank you very much. Ew, that squish was gross. So there seems to be a crafting table. We can use it to make a digester. Making sure to feed our digester, it can then digest other foods into nutrient paste. Nine paste will make one nutrient bar and that will be our food sorted forever. I'm hoping that if we use item pipes and some hopper botany pots, we'll be able to auto feed it some food to make infinite nutrient bars. I'll see if wheat works, otherwise we can just use potatoes. So I've digested some lapis and now we need to digest redstone. And then finally leather. Then if we combine one living flesh, five flesh bits, eight bone fragments, four turf fibers and two exotic dust, we can make ourselves a bioforge. Again, we must feed it, which is a hilarious concept in general. But we can combine one bile, one nutrient and one vial to get organic compound. Combine that with two exotic dust and a mineral fragment and we get exotic compound. Then finally, way over here at our mixer, we can throw in one exotic compound, three gem fragments, three bioluminescent goo and two exotic dust. This is the most bonkers way ever, but we get ourselves 10 diamonds. Yay! <laughs> Bonkers. Up next though, I want to quickly go and work out how to automate those nutrient bars, as this setup isn't working and we kind of need that infinite saturation. Well that was a productive little cutaway, let me show you what I did. I worked out how to automate the digester. You do need to use potatoes because wheat does not work. I've opted to use 4 botany pots but definitely getting more would be better. What's important is that we need to treat it like a furnace. We insert into the side and the top and then we extract from the bottom. We send the digestate into a compacting drawer and we have nutrient bars. Goodbye potato field. 
it was great knowing you. I went ahead and set up some bonus botany pots. We've got sugar, bamboo, dark oak, and spruce. We also now have chickens because we're going to need these to set up a mob farm. The best change that I've made is if we follow this item pipe here, we now have automated washing of all of our crushed ores. And already we have quite a bonkers amount of ingots and assorted goodies. So diamonds, eh? It looks like we're going to need a dagger of sacrifice first. That'll just be one diamond sword. Straight in for the sacrifice. One dagger of sacrifice. Have I said sacrifice enough in this video yet? Probably not. We're going to need this once we have our mob farm, which is coming very soon, so stay tuned for that. In fact, let's make all of the items ready for it. We're going to need a buttload of iron swords, six to make two iron spikes, that should be everything to make the mob masher. We're also going to need a mob fan or three and an absorption hopper. Now if we craft a bunch of the animal seeds from earlier together, we'll get GM chicken feed. If we use that on a chicken, it'll go boom boom and we have a rotten egg. If we place this in a dark room, a 5x5 five five area is going to turn into cursed or dreadful dirt, which has got some interesting spawning rates. Oh and we're also going to need a ton of tinted glass. To finish off these first quests, let's make some high, medium and low covalence dust. We can also now make this repair talisman that's going to automatically repair anything in our inventory or curio slot. It's going to be very handy, I think. We've been working towards getting this alchemy table, but I'm noticing one thing that we're probably going to struggle to get our hands on. The pink energy collector Mark V. It requires 4 amethyst bronze, which is an alloy of copper and amethyst. We have copper, but amethyst? Where do we get you? Oh, that, that's easy. High covalence dust on the blood altar. Dust in, essence out. 20 at a time, very nice. Right then, so let's melt down some copper and some amethyst, and we've got molten amethyst bronze. One block's worth, so that way we can just pour it straight out into our casting basin. Here we go, one block. That's kind of as far as we can go for now, as next we need to work down this side of the quest, which is going to be a whole thing and a half. More blood magic! It'll be nice to progress through it some more, I guess. So let's make up a soul snare, and I'm going to make a second one, as I always miss the first time using it. So let's sniff a cow butt, launch a snare at it, holy Batman, I actually didn't miss. A quick chop later, and we should get some demonic will. Nice. May as well do that again since we've got two and yay, two demon will. That doesn't normally happen, but I'll take it. We can use one of those to make an alchemy table. In it, if we throw in some redstone, coal, gunpowder, white dye, and yes, we need to link our blood orb into our network with a right click. We just need a little bit more LP in here. Then back at the alchemy table, we can throw it in and it'll craft everything into arcane ashes. Those go back into our blood altar and yay, the apprentice blood orb. That finally lets us make some runes, which first we're going to be prioritizing runes of self-sacrifice so we get more LP per sacrifice. For that we're going to need some stone, a bunch of glowstone dust, one reinforced slate each, and of course a blank rune to make it from. So let me get some bits together and see if we can upgrade this altar to be the most self-sacrificial altar ever made. Okay, it's upgrading time. But first, I've just remembered a better way to sacrifice than I am a fool for forgetting. The incense altar. What this does is it allows us to right click once and it will take all of our hearts in one go. But now let's make up a ton of runes of self-sacrifice. 20 to be precise. We'll also then grab 8 runes of capacity. So on this bottom level, we're just going to use only self-sacrifice. And this top level is going to be capacity, just to even things out. Now normally we would get 2 buckets of LP each dagger use. Now we're getting 7 buckets at a time. Incredible. With 26 buckets of capacity. Nice. So moving onwards, we are going to need ritual stone. And a fair few of them. And 4 ritual stones is going to cost us 4 reinforced slates. Slightly expensive on the LP front I must say. Looking ahead, we're also going to need more glowstone. And I think I was quite genius with that. You see... We had enough tech unlocked to make the aqueous accumulator, which means that we can now pump water directly wherever we want. So some dodgy piping meant that we could mostly AFK glowstone creation by piping it into the basin. Then it pulls out the lightning charge into this locked drawer for filtering purposes, and then finally under a spout which also has water piped into it. Finally 10 reinforced slates. 
While we're here, we may as well make the inscription tools. And now we're going to use 25 buckets of life essence in one go to make the magician's blood orb. We're also going to need some rose quartz tiles, which luckily is just rose quartz in the stone cutter. Nice and easy. And now we can make the ritual stone. <laughs> oh wow, that is a lot of quests completed in one go. We're just that good. <laughs> and just in time, our magician's orb has finally finished. Love it. The last thing to make for now is going to be the Ritual Diviner. And can you believe it? We are just missing one diamond. Of course we are. Aren't you glad that I didn't do that in real time with you? But alas, we can now make the Ritual Diviner. We can also make a Lava Crystal. That goes into the Blood Altar and in return we get a weak Activation Crystal. On the Diviner we can select the Edge of the Hidden Realm. And for this we are going to need 36 Ritual Stones. Well, I'd better get my crafting hat on and get this done. A whole lot of crafting later and I think we're almost ready to explore a new dimension. Here's a little pro tip for you. Make sure you make a divination sigil. It's going to allow you to see how much LP is in your life network. It's very handy. We have all of the ritual stones, but annoyingly, we're also going to need to make a master ritual stone. It's annoying because it's going to require four simple storage network routes, which I guess we're going to get into next. We start with a network cable and that'll get us network routes. I'm going to make an extra one since we kind of need to set up a simple storage network of our own anyway. And that is one master ritual stone. Four more ritual stones required and I think we are done. So let's pop down the master ritual stone. Then if we right click with our ritual diviner, it's going to auto build the ritual for us. Making sure that we've got more than 80,000 LP in our network, we can use the weak activation crystal to enable the ritual to the edge of the hidden realm. If we were to right click this, we teleport and likely die very quickly. So it's time to gear up. And now we can go. Yeah, I should have brought torches so you can all see what's going on. Iron keys is exactly what we needed. Sadly, only two out of four though, so Torch is now in hand like a good content creator. Let's head through this door. Yee, why are you so fast? Oh no, I'm in trouble. Yeah, okay, I panicked and I fled. This time I'm going to bring some blocks, so at least this time I can try and cheese the speedy fellas. I've also now set up the simple storage network which has the added benefit of actually being able to search for things. All right, let's try this again, shall we? We are looking for saturated tau, or at least the regular kind. Okay, let's go. Oh gosh, they were waiting for me. No, 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 lock the door, no, no, no. Oh, bother. Well, that didn't go well at all. Oh, keep inventory is enabled by default. That is incredibly useful knowledge. May as well just head back in then and block off the door so we can <laughs> breathe a little. Now I'm thinking maybe we can just cheese the guys. Oh, hello, little friends. I have claimed some ground. <laughs> yeah, this is not going well at all. Moving closer towards the chest, these fellas are illegally fast. Okay, I think we can reach the chest. Non-saturated tower fruit. I can work with this. Let's go home. We can plant down our tower fruit and then I think we just need to get a sigil. For that we're going to need a growth reagent, which is just some saplings, a sugar cane and a sugar. Let's chuck those into the alchemy table and that's one growth reagent done. So let's right click with arcane ashes, add in our reagent and solidify it with a reinforced rune. It'll be sacrificed to the arcane and in return we'll get a sigil of the green grove. Now making sure that we've got LP in our network, we can shift right click the sigil to enable it. And if we're standing on top of our tau fruit, it'll start to saturate. One saturated tau fruit. Nice. Now we needed this in order to make the pink energy collector. Our first tipple into project E. For that we'll need a lava crystal. Like this. Plus some calcite and boom. 
we have our energy collector and we can use that to make an alchemy table but sadly i've just realized that we're going to need one more energy collector amazingly i think we do have enough resources for that incredible so down goes the alchemy table and right next to it our collector now we can do some very basic equivalent exchange we can throw in some glowstone and very slowly it'll use the generated emc to convert into a blaze powder we can pop one of them back in and it'll convert into an actual blaze rod which legally we can then turn back into two blaze powder okay yeah we can duplicate blaze rods oh we can sextuple it by using the crushing wheels that is wild anyway using the blaze rod we can make a heat engine which now unlocks access to deployers in order to upgrade our altars to the next level we're gonna need to work through these three quest lines here we need gobba globet Prismarina Glomeratio and Deep Slate. But I think now is the perfect time for me to finally go ahead and set up that mob farm. I'll see you in just a little bit. So are you ready to be amazed by a super simple mob farm that is extremely overpowered? This is it. It's tiny but very efficient. It's tall enough to catch Endermen and we have no problem spawning the large slimes. All of the drops are picked up by this absorption hopper. Experience goes up to this tank which goes into a solidifier to make our XP jelly babies. Not really useful in this pack but it's a very easy way to store XP. But all of the items get sent into this backpack. I'm using a backpack due to these stack upgrades which makes it a lot easier to set up the filters before we were overflowing with drops. The items are then extracted out of the backpack and into this draw controller because the item card is set to nearest first. These are all of the items that I've picked out so far that I want to keep. Any excess items or items without slots are just sent over to the trash can since it's the next closest option. In the mob masher I've added pretty much every single upgrade except for the fire one. That's because fire bad. Oh and this ender inhibitor is going to stop any enderman from teleporting out of the farm, which is kind of annoying. This mob farm is simple, it's sleek, and it works. Progression time! Let's craft up a petty tartaric gem in our Hellfire Forge, which we can combine with a sword to make a sentient sword. Now we need a second petty gem, and if we kill hostile mobs with this sword, we'll start to fill the gem up with will. Oh, and just so you're aware, filling up these gems with all of the will is a soul-crushing task to complete. Once it's full, we need to then upgrade it to the lesser Tartaric Gem and fill that one up too. That'll let us make the common Tartaric Gem and again, once filled, we can make the greater Tartaric Gem. So crushing. Like, this is now my life for like the next few hours probably. Wish me luck. Okay, so I've made it as far as filling up the common gem, but to move forward, we are going to need the tier 4 blood altar. Let's work on some prismarine. First, we're going to need to smelt down some demon will and pour that over some sand. This is going to give us soul sand and access to bulk haunting. So after making some more soul sand the easy way, we can now haunt a ton of lapis into prismarine shards. We'll chuck some of them into the alchemy table to exchange into prismarine crystals. And in the bio forge, we can make the first agglomeratio. We're working towards this secret sequenced assembly. Back over at the Hellfire Forge we can make up the Gobba Globet nice and easy. Smelting down some cobble deep slate gives us the deep slate that we need. The last items on my list is two imbued slates. This requires more sacrifice and I forgot to mention that I made an advanced feeding upgrade for the backpack so now we automatically eat when our saturation runs out. I am such a fan of doing less micromanaging. And that's two imbued slates. Nice! So we need four deployers and one mechanical press. For now we can set this up over here as <laughs> very soon I'm going to be ripping down this entire island and building it back properly. So we'll chuck some shears on, then run down to the other end of the belt to grab them and send them through a second time. We've got the Sanguine Reverter. Next, we need to supply 18 Amethyst, Blaze Powder, Medium and Low Covalence to our Hellfire Forge. And in return, we'll get 18 Gala Ingots, which we'll craft into two blocks. We can now craft up the Apparatus Armamentus. If we use that on a displacement rune, we're going to get the Arc Furnace. One thing I know for sure is Blood Magic is a bonkers mod. But finally, in the Arc Furnace, we can throw in our Reverter and our Saturated Tau, and we get a weak blood shard. We can use it to make some bloodstone bricks, which means we can now finally upgrade our altar to the mighty tier 4. 
done. If we look at the altar, in the top left, it'll say tier 4. Massive success. So are you all ready to delve deep into the next quest chapter? I think I'm ready. I just need a quick cup of tea and a biscuit fist. So putting a weak blood shard into the altar is going to give us our master blood orb which we can then use to make some gorsome ingots in the Hellfire Forge. We can smelt that and pour it over some tool moulds, and it can be combined into the Essentia Iaculus. This is a massive advancement in tech, and I'll show you why in just a moment. I just need to get some blocks together first. These blocks right here. For a start anyway. So if we take this Essentia Iaculus, which going forward I'm just going to call it the Scythe, if we right click on one of these blocks, we start to generate some essence like amethyst, silver, gold, lapis, redstone, the list goes on and on. Wanna know what's gonna suck though? A lot of the essences cannot be made this way. Instead, we must use the biolab to combine two essences together. Take osmium for example. We'll need to combine one mythful essence and one titanium essence. Mythful needs one chrome and one titanium. There is a ton of deep microcrafting like this in our future. Remember that poll from earlier? Well, I'm willing to let you off of that wish just this once, and I'll go ahead and do all of the work and I will edit it out for you. But in return, of course, you need to leave a like on the video. You know, for my sacrifice. <laughs> so for now, I just need some fire essence and let me show you something broken. Using a scythe on a campfire to get the essence, we can auto click for super fast drops. There's no cooldown. It's incredible. But yay, we now have access to lava. Though I can't really remember why I needed it. It's just kind of nice to have it now. Now over at the altar, I went ahead and added some more augmented runes. We've got speed runes, more capacity and more self-sacrifice. We can now hold around 45 buckets of LP, which is great. However, we can take this one step further. The incense altar is actually part of a big multi-block structure, which I'd rather build sooner rather than later. It looks just like this, and we can plonk it under our altar to make it so that we get a ton of bonus LP every time we make a sacrifice. It's progression time. Combining iron essence and quartz essence gives us quartz enriched iron essence. I think you might know what we're going to be unlocking soon. But first, we're going to need a power source. So let's start by getting into a little bit of thermal series. Let's make up some machine frames, and I think we'll start with the lapidary dynamos. Three for now, and we can throw in some of our abundant lapis to power them. And we can extract that power nice and easy with energy pipes. Our first machine will be a pulverizer. Pop it on some power and we can now pulverize. Check in the quest, we need this pulverizer to make chromatic compound. Oh, that's odd. We actually need an induction smelter for that. No idea why it's under the pulverizer quest. For the induction smelter, we're gonna need uranium. And oh dear, that is some microcrafting right there to get the uranium essence. Please hold. Here it comes. So that's two uranium gears and an induction smelter. In here, we can throw in some polished rose quartz, powdered obsidian, and glowstone dust. And in return, we'll get chromatic compound. If we throw this into a beacon's beam, it'll make refined radiance, which has some very interesting properties here in this mod pack. I'll tell you a little more about that later. Let's finally dig into some digital storage. We can bulk smelt some quartz into silicon and make up a ton of raw basic processors. We'll also get some raw improved ones, but I'm going to hold off on making too many advanced ones as we don't really have a way to get more diamonds easily. Some more bulk smelting and we now have a bunch of lovely processors to use. Up first, we need a controller, a grid, a crafting grid, and some cable. Oh, and an external storage too. That's gonna go on our colossal chest. Then in our crafting grid, we can now access and craft from within that chest. Technically, we could already do that, but we're kind of going to ignore that bit, okay? Next, I want to speed towards getting this transmutation table. That's because as soon as we have this, I'm going to rip down this entire island and rebuild it. Those of you familiar with my videos will know that if I'm playing a skyblock map, I don't want it to look like a skyblock. That means I don't want to see any void by the time I'm done. And look, there is a lot of void to cover up here. That's going to be a mighty challenge. But I'm getting ahead of myself. 
We're first going to need some bronze, amethyst bronze and invar. We combine the two bronzes to make ruby dust. We'll need constantan and lumium to make the energy condenser mark 2. Everything is pretty much made in the induction smelter except for this amethyst bronze, which is a smeltery job with copper and amethyst. What? We'll need a fluid encapsulator to make the energy condenser and it requires molten hepatizen. That requires cobalt, which we're going to get from man of steel and netherite essence. This is madness. The microcrafting will be the end of me. Oh, never mind. There's a mixing recipe, though it does require superheating. Oh no, blaze cakes look hard. I need another cup of tea and a biscuit. I went ahead and made some thermal machines that we're probably going to need. I used the blast chiller to make 9 ice, and if we then wash this, we're going to get 9 packed ice. We can craft that into blue ice, and if we scythe this, we get ice essence. I've also managed to make the cake base and supremium coal. The coal was made from supremium essence, which is just made in the blood altar. We can then take our newly acquired ice essence and craft it into some basalt blocks, which now gives us the basalt essence. And if we craft up some wither skeleton skulls, that's 3 out of 6 items for the blaze cake done. Up next, we're going to tackle the blaze spawner eggs. We'll need 8 eggs, 32 volatile fluid, and 16 genetic compounds. So let me just get up close and personal with our digester real quick. And that is the blaze spawn eggs sorted. Now we're also going to need a blaze head. So let's spawn a blaze into our mob farm. And because we have the beheading upgrades, we're almost guaranteed to get ahead. The final item is the nether gob of foo. That requires 8 gob of foo and one nether gobber glob. The nether gobber glob is made from nine nether gobber globettes. The nether gobber globettes are made in the hellfire forge using nether wart, nether rack, high covalence dust and nether scrap sand. Oh no, I'm a fool. There's another recipe for hepatizen and it's incredibly easy and doesn't require any superheating. I feel so silly. Obsidian, invar and copper in an induction smelter and wow, would you look at that. Hepatizen ingots. So let's make an alchemical chest Smelt down the hepatizen so we can grab a quick bucket of it and throw the liquid and the chest into the fluid encapsulator. We've got an energy condenser. In theory, we can place this down next to our pink energy collector. Oh yes, we can use it to print infinite diamonds or anything with an EMC value. This is going to be so nice to have. We can even upgrade it with molten lumium to make it a Mark II. Next, we need to get a ruby. For that, we're going to need 8 ruby essence, which is going to require a butt ton of Bioforge microcrafting. But through the power of editing, that's what I've gone and done. I hate microcrafting so much. Oh, and thank goodness they have an EMC value. A quick bit of sanding, and my friends, we have got the Philosopher's Stone. And Harry Potter is now very mad at us. Mark II condenser on the depot, Philosopher's Stone in the deployer, and we've got the transmutation table. This is massive. Now, any items with an EMC value, once we've learned the recipe, we can print as many as we want, providing that we've got an equivalent amount of EMC in our wallet. Now, what I need to do is go through our colossal chest, find everything with an EMC value, and teach the table how to make them. This is going to be so incredibly useful. And on that note, it's time to design an island for us to live out the rest of our days on and to finish this mod pack with. We've had a good run with this mess here, but we can do so much better. Well, this is what I've come up with. Nothing too fancy, but it fulfills my goal of not knowing that we're on a sky block. If we hop over this lake, we can head down into our biomancy cave, where I've decorated it with some fleshy blocks to try and make it look as gross as possible. Very fleshy. In the center of our island is our blood altar, where I've made sure to leave enough room for upgrading it to a tier 5 altar later. And right underneath is our tranquility altar. This multi-block structure gives us a ton of bonus LP every time we make a sacrifice. Then right up here is our processing area, and there's a hobble waiting to greet us. All in all, I think this has given us a solid foundation to build from. I mean, looking out into the distance, I feel a sense of happiness. When oh, that tower over there is now our mob farm. This is what the map looks like. 
were on a large circular island with a diamond shape going around our square blood altar. This was all made possible by one item in particular. You make yourself an iron band which is just lava and iron, then combine it with some feathers and some dark matter and you get a swift waltz rending gale. Once equipped and providing you have EMC fuel in your inventory, you are granted access to creative flight. In any world, the ability to fly creatively is so useful for building. Now, you may have noticed that I have 400 million EMC, and you really want to know how. Well, all whilst I was building, I had a bunch of these setups here down. A ton of energy collectors surrounding an energy condenser. All it does is it passively generates items with EMC which we can then sell to our transmutation for Stonk's EMC. I think the final things to catch you up on here is this refined EMC link, which gives our refined storage system access to our EMC network for any items that we put into it. Like currently we can pull out 7.4 million raw beef if we so desired to. But it is questing time. We need to work our way up through this quest line here, but for that we are going to need cutting fluid. For basic cutting fluid, we're going to need gunpowder, redstone and sugar, which we already have. We'll need coal sand, a water sigil and plant oil. Plant oil is easy, it's just two potatoes and a bone meal, and coal sand is just two coal and a flint. The water sigil is an arcane ritual, with a water reagent and a blank slate. Throw it all together and we get some basic cutting fluid. All we're missing for the intermediate cutting fluid is sulfur which is just a lava bucket and a cobblestone. However, the advanced cutting fluid requires a greater tartaric gem, which is crazy expensive for me. So let's throw in our full common tartaric gem, a demonic slate, a demon will crystal, and a weak blood shard. Now we have a greater tartaric gem that is so expensive. Up next, we need saltpeter, which is just two plant oil and a coal sand. We can then alchemize that with our greater tartaric gem, which is so expensive, some sulfur and a water sigil, some glow berries and the intermediate cutting fluid. It'll craft up the advanced cutting fluid and it consumed our greater gem and I really want to cry. <sighs> Wiping the tears from my face, let's work on some ancient debris. Let's grab a molten obsidian from our smeltery and pop it into the fluid encapsulator with a block of hepatizen. That's our first block of debris. Next, it appears that we need a resonator. In order to make that, we are going to need to die inside and get another greater tartaric gem. This is my life now but even more hours as it also kind of needs to be a full greater gem. Uh... Okay, so let's craft up the greater tartaric gem. Nice. Now to finish filling this up. All filled up and we now have the crystal resonator. I am so happy to see that it didn't consume the gem this time. Next, we need to put some explosive powder into the ARC with our debris, which gives us ancient debris fragments. We can put that back in with the resonator we just made to get some ancient debris gravel. Then throw in some advanced cutting fluid and the ancient debris gravel, and our hard work is all coming together when we get netherite scrap sand. We can smelt that down into one netherite scrap, which is fantastic because it's got its very own EMC value. Judging. This quest page is looking mighty healthy. And next we need to work down here, working towards power and a tier 5 blood altar. Let's see how quickly we can get this done. Lapis into the smeltery to get molten lapis and again into the encapsulator, this time with a signalum ingot. Whoopsies, this time it goes into the blast chiller with a signalum, then we get the enderium ingot. We can smelt that down into molten enderium, that goes into a tank with a spout and we sploosh it over some ruby essence to get sapphire essence. Next we actually need to finish off the blaze cake. We're just missing the nether gobber foo, so let me get that done real quick. There we go. Wasn't too bad, it was just a bunch of microcrafting. Let's throw in our master blood orb and watch as hours of hard work combine together to make one blaze cake. I hope we never need more than one. Okay. In order to turn the essence into sapphire dust, we're of course going to need some sequenced assembly. We're going to need 15 Kepu ingots and 15 Pyroot ingots. Kepu is made in the Bioforge and ooh, Pyroot is made via superheating. Technically, we only need to make one of each ingot, as if we defeat the Wither, we're going to be able to duplicate them even though they've got no EMC value. For the Kepu ingot, we're going to need 256 bioluminescent goo, 96 lithic powder, 8 corrosive additive, and 2 iron ingots. In our Biomancy cave, I've set up a ton of digesters, 
each with some very specific items in them. We've got one doing shroom lights for bioluminescent goo, one had gravel to make the lithic powder, and one for redstone given mineral fragments which I think were required for the corrosive additive. So let me just craft some things together real quick, then over at the bioforge we can craft up two kepu ingots. Now we need a beacon. So that means it's wither time. I'm gonna chicken out and use the mob farm and hope for an instant kill. And I'm really hoping it's not gonna destroy the island. Success! That was super easy. No, 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 no. I think I've just done a whoopsie. Oh no. You see, the way I've got the drops being filtered means that I've unintentionally voided the nether star. I am such a fool. Now it shouldn't get voided, so let me just spawn another wither. Success! One nether star and it has an EMC value. Brilliant. And there we go, that is the beacon made. Nice. But now in this gap behind me, it's time for me to go and set up some create again. As in the quest lines, there is a ton of create stuff coming up soon. I'll see you in just a moment. Okay, so I've kept it super simple for now as I've not quite worked out infinite lava just yet for the boilers. But I think we're ready to use our blaze cake, which is very scary. But first, let me avoid that by telling you about these crushing wheels. They're crushing obsidian down into obsidian powder, which is important because I've set up some semi-automation. Above this induction smelter, we are importing all of the ingredients for chromatic compound, which eventually end up in this drawer. And all we need to do is grab some out, Throw it onto the beacon beam to have it convert instantly into refined radiance. To make sure it's lossless, I've got a accumulator to pick them up for me. Before I waste my cake, I also want to tell you about these dark matter pedestals. More specifically, these life stones. When activated, we can now regenerate hearts and saturation fairly quickly without needing to wait for food healing. Alright, in our basin we have one nether gobber ingot and one saturated tau. If we use our blaze cake to superheat, oh thank goodness we get a pyroot ingot. We can craft this with the refined radiance and boom, we can duplicate them to our heart's content. Time to sequentially assemble. Kepu goes here, pyroot goes here and on goes our sapphire essence. That'll work its way through the sequence and then we just send it round 14 more times. And then we've got the sapphire dust. So let's make a gem cast, Pop that into our multi servo press with the sapphire dust and amazing we have got one sapphire with an EMC value. Sapphires for days. That was so much work. From here we're going to be able to get into a little bit or well all of the power mod. Which I'm not really looking forward to because that's a heck of a lot of micro crafting. So instead we're going to work towards the tier 5 blood altar. Let's pop a sapphire into the blood altar to get a dusk ritual inscriber. Two of them actually. Then we can combine it with our ritual diviner to augment it to the dusky version. We're looking for the endless realm. Same as last time we have it all to build for us. And this one's going to cost us 150,000 life points. So let's give it an activate and we've unlocked the new dimension. So let me get some bits together and we can go in search of demonite. Okay, let's go. Oh, and it's dark again. Two iron keys and they've got an EMC value. That's hilarious. Okay, so let's speed run this dungeon to find that demonite. Oh dear, I think I'm gonna need some stronger armor for this. Alright, so I'm working on the stronger armor, but I kind of feel like I should be including some of the mechanics into this video, as it can get quite confusing. I'm up to the end gobber armor, and for that you need end gobber globettes. For that you're gonna need end stone, which we can get by using glowstone dust on a cobblestone. In order to make the end gobber ingot, however, you're gonna need a chorus flower. Chorus fruit we can get from the alchemy table with an eye of ender, but the only way that I've found to get a flower is using botany pots. So that's what I've got set up over here and it took a very long time. Now that I've told you that, I'm going to get to the old Lamogium armor and we're going to try again. All Lamogium acquired and enchanted, let's head back through and search for demonite. Yes, finally a demonite room. That took far too long. Let's hoover all of this up and we can head back home. Alright, so after organizing the backpack, we now have 36 Hellforged ingots. Let's craft those into 4 Hellforged blocks and we can now upgrade to the final tier of Blood Altars. 1, 2, 3 and 4. 
Hidden under our EMC wallet, we can confirm it's a tier 5 halter. I also spent around 30 minutes crafting up this invulnerability talisman, but I couldn't get it to function while sacrificing, so I'm just going to cut that bit out. Well, that was a waste of time, but now I get to waste even more time by working through the different tiers of the power mod. I think it's time for a cup of tea though, as it's healthy to take breaks between grindy microcrafting sessions. Okay, okay, so before we dive into the power mod, I think I've stumbled upon something really handy that we need to try and make. Pressing U on the transmutation tablet shows us we can craft an arcane version. It's the same functionality, but this one's got a crafting grid. Absolute game changer if true. My complaint is that in order to craft it, we're going to need the Magnum Star Iron, which is part of the top three worst micro crafting grinds of all time. It needs the Kleinstar Omega, Sphere, Via, Dre, Zui and Iron. Okay, it's done. Arcane transmutation table. Oh my goodness, it does have crafting from EMC. This is going to be so, so, so good. I'm even tempted to make a start on the power flowers now that we've got this. Like, we can just teach the recipes as we progress through. Well, that's the basic one. It's basically junk at this point, but it's a start. Oh, and if you ever need fast DMC, netherite ingots are incredibly easy and sell for a lot. So it looks like I found a reason to avoid power for a little bit more. And I know how desperate you are to see me grind out these power flowers, but I'm going to take some time to see how high of a level of flower that we can get to. I'll see you in a short while. Blue. Blue is as far as we can get right now until we get the Watcher Flowing Time. They cost 2 billion EMC each flower, and there's no way that I'm making that much netherite. So power it is. So let's learn how to make dielectric paste, horizontal rods, and vertical rods. We can make the energizing orb, basic capacitors, dielectric casing, and the starter energizing rod. Immediately upgrading that to basic. We're also going to need some cable from the mod. This is basically the setup and we'll replace the rods and cables as we progress. We can put in one gold and one iron ingot and that's going to take some time to convert over to energized steel, which has got an EMC value. Nice. We can use that to make some hardened capacitors which we can then use to upgrade, so on and so forth. I'm not going to make you watch this, it's, it's not a pretty sight. But eventually you'll get to nitro and be able to make a nitro reactor, which for now I'm going to place down in here. Let's pop on an exporter and we can export blue ice, uraninite, coal and redstone. We'll also need a coolant so let's pop in some water. And now we are generating 176 million FE per tick, which is insane because this pack has buffed it for the end game. Okay, so story time. I was extremely sleep deprived last night and I decided to pop down a ton of flowers and leave it running overnight. The problem is I forgot to first craft the watcher flowing time, so they're everywhere everywhere. Power flowers as far as the eye can see, which is daft because it's completely unnecessary. Let's work on that watch shall we? We'll craft up the extreme crafter which as its name implies is extreme crafting. We should be able to use it though to craft up the said watch of flowing time. And yes it's always this laggy using this crafter. Pop down a pedestal, pop the watch on top and activate. You'll notice that our EMC per second starts to dramatically increase. What this is doing is it's accelerating ticks in an area around the watch, in this case our flowers. But we can really add as many as we like and it'll keep going up. 92 trillion per second. Nice. I guess it's time to clear up my sleep deprived mess. And finally, the final power flower is craftable. Let's pop you under here and let's see. 3.89p per second. I have no idea what P is, but it sounds big. It's at this point where we really need to never worry about EMC again. And that's everything in Project D complete, except this daft final star which is just annoying. But now for some bad news. To get into Flux Networks, we're going to need Flux Dust, which we're gonna get from superheating. That means that I've gotta go now and make another blaze cake. Except I tricked you, it's not bad news as I looked ahead and I prepared 4 more blaze cakes like a pro Minecraft player. So lava, nitro crystal, superheat, and flux dust. With an EMC value, the flux core requires a few items, but also this proto lava. We need to smelt down lava, ender pearls, and chorus flowers. That gives us one bucket of proto lava, but we can mix it all together, and that's the flux core. Now we should have full access to flux networks, which is gonna let us wirelessly transfer power anywhere. The plug goes on the reactor, and the points go wherever we need power. Let's progress to chapter 4. 
Oh dear, it's the scary mod. FTB Industrial Contraptions, previously known as Industrial Craft. Fun fact, when Hobble was younger and modded Minecraft was much harder to do, Industrial Craft made Hobble quit modding Minecraft for many years. I'm pretty sure it's going to be easier this time round as it's going to be documentation and YouTube exists this time. So let's convert some iron over to industrial grade metal where we can use it to make charged surface quartz, which is going to require some create stuff. So I think it's now time that I set up a full create setup so we can finish this pack. I will be right back. Okay, so I fully automated refined radiance. We're gonna need a lot. I've now got it going into a backpack with a ton of stack upgrades, so we can store more than we're ever going to need. Just in case. Over here we've now got a boiler, and we've got unlimited lava thanks to this magma crucible, pulling netherrack from our EMC. I've done a similar thing with crushed obsidian, just spawning in the blocks with EMC. In exciting news, I think I found a way to automate the bioforge, yeah. which is a massive win. The way that I'm doing it is teaching a recipe to this crafter that sends items to this chest. We've got two pipes pulling out of the chest, each filtered to accept one of the ingredients needed. I just need to be mindful not to request more than 64 at a time, otherwise the entire system will break. But I only need to teach each essence once, so in theory I should save time. So we left off wanting to make charged surges quartz, so let's do that. We can power these crafters and that's going to make us a Tesla coil. That goes above a depot or a belt with a flux plug connected to it. Sirtis Quartz goes onto the depot and they should charge right up. Nice! We can throw that into a basin with quartz and redstone to get some- Oh no, I need to set a filter. We'll get some Fluix crystals. We'll make up two Fluix blocks and craft ourselves an inscriber. We are now in our Applied Energistics 2 era. But as always, we need this inscriber to make circuits. Thankfully, the presses can just be crafted since we ain't got no meteorites here. Now I'm not going to do a really deep dive into AE2 with you in this video. The premise is we're going to take presses, some materials and it'll make printed circuits. That's what'll be used to make the industrial circuits. And I was told on Discord by the pack developer to make sure that I automate these Iridium circuits. Which by the looks of it is a large task to undertake. But now we can just melt down some slime into rubber and teach that to our tablet. Then we can use it to make some LB cables. We can make up some fuses. And now I need to set up three different sets of sequenced assembly to make those industrial circuits. Wish me luck. I'm gonna need it. That's the printed circuits automated with the advanced subscribers. Now to tackle create. Okay, I'll be the first to admit that yes, that is a lot of deployers and a lot of exporters. But I think it looks cool, so I guess that's what matters. The first row is for the basic circuits, using fuse as an LB cable. The rest is going to need a ton of industrial iron. That's why I sat down at the blood altar for a while and bulk made a ton of it instead of trying to automate it. So let's set up our first auto craft. We only need to send over the circuit and we can pop that into the crafter. Now the moment of truth. Let's request one and see if it works. So far so good. I've got it running slowly just in case mistakes. Success! We have got an electronic circuit. Moving on to the advanced circuit, this is where things get a little more tricky. The first item is the engineering circuit, so in the first exporter I've added that in with a crafting upgrade. Then we need advanced alloy which I've not automated yet. But that's basically what all of these other exporters are. The ingredients and a crafting upgrade. Right then! I've cleared out an area over here for all of our new industrial machines. First we need machine blocks, that's going to let us make a macerator and a basic generator. Now this is where things get confusing. Looking at the macerator tooltip, it requires two energy units, not four units. It's got its own power system, and machines will absolutely break if they're overpowered. Thankfully for now we can just use coal in the generator to make enough energy units, but later on I think it's going to get a bit tricky to power. Next we'll need a compressor, which we'll use to make a carbon plate. Carbon plate is one carbon fibre mesh compressed, carbon fibre mesh is four coal dust, and coal dust we get from macerating coal. So coal goes in, and they're slowly used, so let's use the water flowing time here. Coal dust into fibres, fibres into mesh, and mesh into carbon plate. We are going to need to automate this at some point for the sequenced assembly. Now we're going to need an advanced machine block, which requires copper coils and oh yay the bioforge. <coughs> and we need advanced alloy, which needs mixed metal blend, which we get from pulverising. 
Something like this will do nicely. One for lead dust, one for constantum blend, and one for tin dust. Then just a pattern to combine them into mixed metal blend. Oh, and of course we need to smelt it so a redstone finish will do the trick. Boom! One advanced machine block. The only things left to work out are the Iridium plates and graphene. Graphene should be easy to automate, cobalt have got an EMC value, and we just need to compress those into a compressed version, then they get crafted with obsidian into graphene. The Iridium plates, however, that requires us to roll Iridium ingots. The roller is nice and easy to make at least. Now then, our first Iridium ingot is going to come from Iridium dust. Iridium dust is from pulverizing Iridium chunks, and that comes from Iridium essence. Which means, I need to go and teach some more recipes to the Bioforge. My most favourite task ever. I also took the time to automate the remaining recipes for the sequenced assembly. And this is all of the machines from earlier with all of the crafters and automation. Now I found a broken potato that you need to know about. It's hidden away in chapter 3 and it's to make the capacitato. I made it so we can get 100% completion, but the reward was unbelievable. It's not a potato as one would think. It's a thermal augment. A very powerful augment. Watch the speed of this induction smelter. That's some incredibly fast processing. We're now up to 67,000 refined radiants, and we're now using some of them here to constantly duplicate iridium ingots, just to keep this drawer full. It's easier than automating them the proper way. And as you can see, we have no moving deployer hands. So that means that they are all holding their item. So why don't we go ahead and request a stack of Iridium circuits? Oh my goodness, that looks so cool. And all of the plops are super satisfying. Moving on upwards, we're going to need to start working on these spatial components. But as a gift to you, I had refined storage auto craft them earlier. Quest complete. Now we can just combine them into the 128 spatial component. Nice. Then we can request the matter condenser and voila. We are ready to progress again. Well, we are once we finish processing the 64k storage part. That took ages, but we can pop that into the condenser. We can set the machine to creating singularities. In order to create a singularity, we've got to pump in 256,000 items. We'll just use an EMC link and a super speedy pipe upgrade. And less than a minute later, we've got our first of many singularities. We'll use it to request an antimatter constructor. And that's going to go on our industrial cables. Once this thing has consumed enough energy to charge, it's going to make one antimatter. However, the quest tooltip is yelling at us to put some scrap inside of it. Yes, sir. For that, we need a reprocessor. And if we throw in some cobble, we have a small chance of generating scrap, which we can then move into the antimatter machine. Already 12 antimatter, and oh my goodness, that's a lot of quest completions. These are all of the ingots that we're going to need to make in order to complete the pack, but they only complete after getting antimatter. We have got a long way to go. One step at a time. We've completed this half over here, and we're now forced to go through some draconic evolution. It all starts with a draconium ingot. We'll need draconium dust which is draconium essence and that's going to be made with extreme crafting and currently i can make two of them oh dear back to micro crafting i guess but after some work we can now craft up one of the draconium dust then a scrap box onto a depot dust in its hand and we have one draconium ingot and i would have been very cross if it didn't have an emc value now i need to tidy up this mess and try and scale up our antimatter production only then we can dive deep into draconic evolution so i've scaled everything up and i'm still using the basic generator because any higher is confusing me i've gone for five reprocessors to make the scrap which is extracted into the antimatter constructor we're up to 5000 so far but I think we're going to need around 28,000 to finish. So, Draconic Evolution. We'll start with a fusion crafting core and some Draconic Ejectors. Let us begin the evolution. We'll pop down the core and leaving a two block gap, we'll have our crafting injectors facing inwards. For now, we're going to need eight injectors. Let's grab some Draconium cores, Draconium blocks, Wyvern cores and some diamonds. We're going to use this to upgrade some Draconium injectors to the next level. Oh yeah, once we've added some power, of course. Fully charged, we've got one Wyvern Fusion Crafting Injector. Now to replace all of these Draconic Injectors with them. But our end game goal is to craft this here. To make the tiny Chaos Fragment. By my count, we're going to need 56 of these Antimatter Crystals. Meaning we'll need 56 of the highest tier Crafting Injector. That means a lot of bulk crafting. Which can be made easy with some Observers. Okay, we're making progress. 
but in order to progress any further, we're gonna need Awakened Draconium. That needs a Dragon Heart. There's no stronghold on this world, so we're gonna need to make our own end portal. It's three blocks of Enderium, an end stone, and five wyvern cores, all of which we have plenty of. Well, frames. To be fair, I can't remember how many are actually in a portal frame. That's that sacred vanilla knowledge that everyone else seems to have. I think I'm gonna hide this up in the trees on top of the Biomancy Cave. Now we can pop in some Eyes of Ender and why didn't this work? Um, don't mess up while building it. Oh no, yeah, I'm sure I messed this up. And we liked it like another portal? No? Okay, yep, I built it wrong. Apparently these things are directional and all need to be placed while standing in the center of the portal. And yes, that works. Shout out to Discord for that one. We've got mostly enchanted unobtainium armor and a sword. It shouldn't be too bad, so let's just jump in. Oh, we're in a cage. Oh, it's a modded dragon fight. This could be bad for us. I don't normally include the dragon fight in my videos due to how repetitive it is. So let's see what I actually include in this video. Step one is to mute the dragon sounds. Why is it so loud? Let's make start on these end crystals. Wait, what? I've lost creative flight. Why? Things just got so much more difficult. Okay, flight came back and I quickly destroyed all of the crystals. Dang it, no flight again. Oh no, the crystals regenerate and oh, so does it help. I don't think I can do this quick enough. Right, ender pearls, please. Please, come on, come on, come on, do it, do it. Yes! That was so difficult and I so regret not enchanting my bow. But that is one dragon heart obtained. The nicest of knights. Finally, not too long after, we're about to craft up our first draconic injector. And boom, our first one of 64. I'm making extra just in case I make a mistake. Now it's just a waiting game. And the wait is over, we have the injectors. Now we need to work on the ingredients for the antimatter crystals. Each requires 512 antimatter and one energy crystal. They need an obtainium crystal, which is, oh, it's a whole microcrafting bioforge chain. I'll deal with that in a moment. We're only a third of the way there on the antimatter, so I think I should probably scale this up again. I have returned. I am old now. This is our Draconic Evolution crafting setup. It is bonkers. We had five reprocessors. I've added 10 more to the fray and we've got 55,000 antimatter. I let it make extra just in case I'm bad at math. So let's pick up this drawer and move it down to our biomancy area. Now I get to sit here and just fill my inventory with antimatter, craft the antimatter crystal, four at a time. I just need to do this 15 more times. Yay, having fun playing Minecraft video game. Woo, 58 will do, I think. The last thing on our shopping list is this ender slime crystal. We'll need a neutronium compressor and 10,000 sky slime crystals. We get that from blasting sky slime dirt, which requires casting four slime balls over some dirt. That means it's finally time to automate a tinker smeltery. Hold your horses. I've missed an important piece of microcrafting that is a doozy. We need neutronium so we can make the neutronium compressor. In order to make an inga, we need neutronium nuggets, which in turn need piles of neutrons. We'll get one from the neutronium essence. Are you ready to hear this? Because I'm not. To make the neutronium essence, we're gonna need one dye essence, one mystical flower essence, one coral essence, and one insanium block. The coral essence, biolab. The dye essence, biolab. The mystical flower essence, crafting. Oh, that's easy. Just kidding. It needs us to kill some withers using our fancy scythe to get nether star essence. So I made a box from witherproof glass and did just that. It'll let us craft the dragon egg essence, but in order to make the mystical flower essence, we need two other essences. Biolab. But before I go and do all of that, this is the setup I use to automate the sky slime. We've got a bunch of basins to speed it up, 15 to be specific, but I must return to my prison now and get all of the essences crafted. That's the mystical flower essence done. Just do me a favor and throw me into the void, yeah? <sighs> my character could be sat on the floor right now, rocking back and forth, holding his head. Trust me, I would choose that option to talk to you right now. Let me get out of this cave and we can start the craft for the Neutronium Essence. It's gonna need to charge 999 billion RF. This is gonna take a minute. This is it, one Neutronium Essence. That's the end of that quest line. 
but there's some optional ones that I'm going to need to do later for 100%. Not now though, I, I can't go back to that cave yet. But that's one pile of neutrons complete and it's got an EMC value. That's the neutronium nugget and my friends, that's the neutronium ingot. Let's work on that compressor, shall we? And boom, that is sorted. Nice. Now we just need to pipe in our sky slime crystals and now we just need to wait a few minutes. We had just over half of the crystals made up, now we just need to wait for the rest to be created. Please hold. That's only gone and done it. One tiny chaos fragment. I did add a second nitro power generator as we're not done with expensive power demand just yet. But that is the small chaos fragment and my friends, that's the large chaos fragment. We'll use it to make a chaotic core in our big boy fusion crafter. That is one core of complete chaos. I'm going a bit insane. To move on, I think we're going to need around 8 of these chaotic fusion crafting injectors. Now we can craft up the chaotic energy controller, which we'll upgrade to the chaotic capacitor. Nice. But the last thing for now in this questline is the creative capacitor. Thankfully, this is now incredibly easy. A chaotic capacitor goes on the depot, antimatter on the deployer. We've got a creative capacitor. Our first creative item. Nice. Now we move on to the end quest line. And you know what? There is a small chance that you forgot to leave a like on this video. So be sure to make sure that you did that. We're going to start with the Piglitch Heart, which is Gorsum, Pig Iron, and an Infinity Pipe upgrade. A Heart of the Sea, a Dragon Heart, and a Gold Singularity. Oh dear. The Gold Singularity is 15,000 gold blocks. Thankfully, we can just use EMC for it. Like this. However, now I gotta go and get another Dragon Heart. Wish me luck. Okay, that was rough. Every time we take damage, we lose flight, even with dragon armor. So frustrating. Made it bearable was adding these augments to the draconic evolution weapons. The real MVP though was this chaotic bow. Lots and lots of augments. Even though the augments were literal nightmare to make, who thought using potions as a crafting ingredient was a good idea? Let's grab our well-deserved piglish heart. Quest complete. Now we need to work on these four infinity catalysts, which is a mega big boy crap. I think setting up singularity making now is a great idea, as this one requires 250 blocks of iridium, so 1000 in total, that's 9000 iridium ingots. We have 64, I think a draw upgrade is in order. This is my idea for making all its singularities, we're using EMC links for each of the blocks, which is why we're now losing 10 million EMC per second. Just gotta finish up the last few exports, making sure that the EMC table actually knows how to create these blocks, and in terms of iridium blocks, we're missing eight and a half thousand of them. Not ideal. While we wait, we have lots more micro crafting to do. We're gonna need a ton of matter clusters, or ultimate stew, or temporal pouches, or quantum entangled singularities, 16 record fragments, some endist pearls, or cosmic meatballs, or dragon stars, or final star shards, and four draconic reactor cores, among other things. For the record fragments, we need mob essence. So I need to adjust the mob farm to start using the scythe for mob dispersal. The matter clusters each require 40,000 singularities. EMC cobblestone like earlier, into the compressor, that should hopefully be quick enough. Ultimate stew. Yeah, that's going to require me to grab a couple of items. Though it was fairly painless with the nature essence. The cosmic meatballs, however, I have no idea where we're going to get raw rabbit from. We'll put a pin in that one and come back to it later. Ender's pearls are fairly painless. Same with the draconic reactor cores. Now I need to go and find rabbits. On a skyblock! We need to wait for the singularities to craft anyway, and I do need to modify the mob farm a little bit, so I'll see you soon with some good news, I hope. Welcome back, my friends, to the Golden Egg Challenge. My name is Hobble, and today we're going to be eating this entire golden egg. We need passive mobs. This egg is like the dreadful dirt one, but for passive mobs. First, let me show you the mob farm. We've got a deployer being given scythe, and when a mob spawns, it'll be attacked and hopefully drop some mob essence. We're getting a nice amount of essence, and we can keep this running in the background. Anyway, passive mobs. We're specifically looking for rabbits, which I hope are now going to spawn. They did not. I totally forgot that we could transmute mobs with a philosopher's stone. That's a pig. That's a fish. A fox. Pig, donkey, rab, rabbit, come here, you. Ah, it's over the fence, come back. Gotcha. How many me? Zero. Oh, no, no me. Got you. Two rabbit meat. That's the perfect amount because the meatballs have an EMC. I just need to fish one more salmon so we can start the craft. Oh, 
Okay, so I have a backpack full of treasure and a heart full of hope. All I think that's left to do is convert all these Iridium blocks over to singularities. There they are. Have I ever told you that how much I dislike singularity endgames? They're the worst. Oh goodness, I don't have enough inventory space to be able to shift click in the recipe. Uh, I'm gonna have to do it manually. Please hold. That's one infinity catalyst, three to go. The final infinity catalyst. That was so much work to get. <laughs> Now we just need to make the infinity ingot itself, which requires some incredibly obscure tinker's ingots. 56 different ingots in total. Like to make one, we need to take a piglage heart and pour over unobtainium all the modium alloy, which combines the two. Except we need soul love, which I don't care how to know how to make right now. Cyber steel needs 90 millibuckets of molten cyber steel. That's an alloy of chorus metal, unobtainium vibranium alloy and 470 millibuckets of molten processor. But the molten processor is from melting down iridium circuits, yielding one millibucket each circuit. I think that's probably why the pack developer told me to automate them. Needless to say, I need to organize and optimize the island, as we're gonna need a ton more smelteries and automation to continue. I'll bring you back when there's something that's worth showing you. Smelteries. Smelteries everywhere. Send help. Look at this mess I made. That big one is going to be automating protolava. We've got a pattern made to just export the molten ingredients to a seared drain. We've got two mini smelteries dedicated to making those two molten liquids, the molten ender and molten chorus. We need that protolava in order to make soul lava, which I'm doing over here with this pattern. Apparently it needs 10 buckets of protolava to make 10 millibuckets of soul lava. That if true. Let me show you my main smeltery. It looks Awesome. Look at all of the alloys that I've had to make. It's so colorful. But here's where I'm up to. It's just the more difficult ones that are left, like Cyber Steel. But I'm gonna set up a new smeltery for that one here, I think. So again, I'm gonna hit record when there's an update to share. It's just much of the same thing at this point. Okay, so over our smeltery, we now have 90 millibuckets of Cyber Steel. Let's pull this fella out. Wait for him to cool down, and my friend, I think we're done. This wall is about to be complete. I'm terrified that I've put one or two in the wrong place and that the craft is gonna fail. Spewing ingots all over the floor. Let's stand back and watch the magic. I think it worked. Yes! Yes! One infinity ingot. And all we have to do now is duplicate this to our heart's content. The first thing it's wanting us to make is the world breaker. That is easy enough now. We can use it to get a piece of bedrock somehow. I think there's some under our blood altar. There is! And yep, I'm holding one bedrock in my inventory. You think that's cursed? Think again. Next, we need to get 2.1 billion bedrock in one inventory slot. I'll show you how that's done a little bit later. First we need a creative vending upgrade and there's a right way to do this and a wrong way to do this. You could mess up your entire end game at this point so be careful of the order you do things in. Follow these 10 steps to survive. Step 1 place down a drawer. Step 2 add in your bedrock. Step 3 lock the drawer and remove your bedrock. Step 4 place bedrock on depot and creative essence in the deployer that gives the creative ability. Step 5. Tier 5 storage upgrade and the creative ability into a smithing table to get the creative storage upgrade. Step 6 is optional. When we place down a drawer, use a hopper to feed the upgrade into the drawer so we can lock it for later use. Step 7. This is important. We're going to set up another drawer with a hopper. Step 8. Combine the storage upgrade with a magenta die for the creative vending upgrade. Step 9, pay attention. Use the hopper to insert the upgrade into the empty drawer and lock it. Step 10, apply that vending upgrade to that drawer so you can withdraw infinite vending upgrades. So now we can apply these to any drawer for infinite items, specifically our bedrock drawer. But it looks like in order to actually unlock this quest, we're first going to need a blood cake. We'll need a creative blaze cake that's a blaze cake on a depot with a bedrock deployed on it. Then we just spout on some life essence. Now we need to take a bite into it to complete this quest. Nom nom nom. Such a strange quest. Now on to 2 billion bedrock. We we'll place down a deployer, a pipe from the bedrock draw into said deployer, and inside the pipe an infinity upgrade. And as soon as we remove the 64 bedrock, oh would you look at that. This deployer is now holding an invisible 2.1 billion bedrock. 
All that's left to do is right click the deployer and I'm a little nervous. I think I'm going to make a backup just in case it crashes my world. Are you ready to complete the pack? Let's go! We are holding 2.1 billion items in one hotbar slot. It's insane. And just like that, I'm going to put them away because it's scary. Legally speaking, we have now completed this mod pack and have gained a completion pig. However, I want 100% completion, so I have a few crafts left to do. In the first chapter, we just need a few biomancy bits. Chapter 1 complete. Chapter 2, we just need a precision mechanism and a wonder symmetry. Chapter 2, complete. Chapter 3 is already done. Chapter 4, we need the upgraded invulnerability talisman, which requires every single blood magic reagent. Well, that was tedious, but not terribly difficult to make them, but, but now we need more chaotic crafters. There we go. Now we also need the big energy balls. Chapter 4 is now complete. And chapter 5 is already done, so my friends, that is 100% of the progression done. Are we done now? No. There's optional quest lines too, like getting all of the essences and all of the armors and weapons. And Project E we can just complete by making this final star. Nice. So now then, let me go and set up the auto crafts for all of the essences and work my way through the armors. I'll see you soon for our 100% party. That's all of the essences complete. Look at how many of these dang essences there are in the recipe chain. Two crafters worth, it's, it's a lot. All that's left to do is craft up the armors, I will see you soon. Gonna be honest, I'm tired of the noise that this machine makes, but we're getting there. Disaster! Some of these infinity items need an infinity catalyst. Five in total. At least we are very smart people and notice that we can millstone the ingots into catalyst. Wouldn't it be so silly of us if we didn't see this recipe until after we'd finished the mod pack? Can you imagine that shame? The shame. And that's number five. That was not a fun surprise at the end of the pack. We can now make infinity leggings, infinity boots, and finally the infinity sword. That is it my friends, that is it. 100% of Project Sacrifice in one single video. If you did enjoy yourself, remember to subscribe and maybe one day I'll complete another mod pack in one episode. Let me know in the comments what pack you would want that to be. But my friends, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.